Good afternoon. We are aware that in the course of the last week, events of considerable moment have happened. Hi, I'm William. And I'm Matt. And this is Duality Gamecast's first repost episode. Today we're looking at the simplification of games. Welcome to the Duality Gamecast, sponsored by Gladiator Games. Today's repost episode features a discussion of game simplifying. So today we're going to talk about the simplification of games. Uh, it seems to be a trend going on in the hobby right now, where games are being simplified, streamlined, replaced by simpler versions. So I just kind of want to go through some different categories I've identified, talk about them, get our feelings, and then maybe try to figure out if I'm overblowing this whole situation. So let's jump right in with probably the, the hottest type of simplification going on right now, and that's in the area of dice games or versions of games being made into dice games. Um, there's a few I want to talk about. Um, number one is Bang Dice. Um, originally Bang the Card Game, a pretty successful Western theme card game, um, is now in a dice form, which has gotten a lot of accolades. Um, really simplified it, really cut down the playtime, and took some of the fiddly bits out. Is this a good thing? What do you think about Bang Dice? I think for Bang Dice, it, it was a good thing. I know we, we love Bang. We played it a ton, and it kind of wore out its welcome. I think Bang Dice fills its role and does it quicker and smoother, and I think that's always, when you're, when you're playing a light game, I think short and smooth is better than adding that little bit of extra meat that you get with the card game. All right. Um, another one that we've played is uh, Viva Java, the dice game. Um, this is a dice iteration of a uh, tabletop game, where, but I'm confused by this one because this was a pretty meaty game. Mm -hmm. I felt it was uh, pretty thinky. Um, it didn't feel like a simplification, but when they sold this at the cons, I felt like they were pitching it as a simplification. So I mean, what do you think? Is it a valid game in itself? Does it represent a simplification? Well, I, I think because it's a dice game, it adds a little bit of simplifying to it, because it adds that Yahtzee component where you what, you have re-rolls, you're still, in the end, you're, you're, you're optimizing what you end up with. So it's kind of like being dealt a hand of cards and playing the old five card, just poker. You have to do with what you have. And I think that simplifies maybe the, the choice options of it, so it makes the game seem simpler. Even though, yeah, if I remember right, there's, there's a little bit of a tech tree. Mind you, each one was just, just a one point you hit at the end, basically, but it definitely seemed to, for me, it was something that ran quickly, and maybe that's what the simplification was for it. Yeah. Uh, last dice game, although I think there are a lot of them, is uh, Nations, the dice game. This game hasn't actually released yet, I don't think, but Nations was a civ building game. Um, and civ building is its own kind of niche in board games or tabletop games. And um, notable for Nations was, although it was a card-based um, civ building game, it was pretty long. And they're coming out with a dice version. And so we haven't played this game yet, but to me it indicates more evidence of the trend. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, we made this game that was pretty successful. If it had criticism, it was probably around length or depth. Let's do a dice version. Um, so, I mean, you feel like I'm off base with the dice game? I think in this case, maybe more. So, it's more online than the other ones. Just because, yeah, you're, you're taking something that's super meaty, and then you're cutting it down to just being like a dice-checking game. At some point, you can't really, other than theme, can, you can't really call it be the same game anymore. It has to, I mean, like, for instance, with Bane Dice, I felt like the card mechanics in it were pretty simple to start with. And I think that all the dice did was kind of trim off the extra fat, and it still feels like Bane. Yeah. Whereas... Um, with this, I think you're gonna. It's gonna feel like a different game. Yeah, I don't see how, but we'll see. Um, so another category I want to talk about is just simplified versions of games. Um, so a few I've come up with. Uh, first off, One Night Ultimate Werewolf. We play Ultimate Werewolf um, fair off, fairly often with large groups, or well, eight to nine people, mm -hmm. not the huge groups, um, and we have a lot of fun. Yes. Uh, it's a good social game. Um, so now they have One Night Ultimate Werewolf, which is kind of like condensed the whole thing. 
I haven't played it. You know more about it. Uh, what do you What do you think about it versus the old werewolf? Well, it it really does feel just like a pared down werewolf to me. Um, it it still plays somewhat the same. There, it's a more social aspect of it. I feel than werewolf. Werewolf, there's a lot of social aspect to it, but because it's just one night, it's more about the little bit of information you know and how people are hinting. Where in werewolf, it's more about playing the odds and trying to displace blame. And that it's it's it it turns like each night of werewolf basically in the time into a game in and of itself, which I think with a more casual crowd would be better, but I think for the more gamier crowd, the bigger the game where you're actually trying to extrapolate who's what and determine what's going on by based on who's picked what will be um, more wanted. So I think, yeah, I, I think it's, when we're talking about simplification, a lot of it comes to do with uh, the crowd you're catering for. Because I think that the One Night Werewolf while Werewolf is a very social, casual type of game, I think One Night Werewolf takes it just to that next level. Yeah. So this is where my, I guess you might call it gamer bias comes in. But I look at Ultimate Werewolf and I think, really? This is a casual game. How much more casual do we need to get? But people are enjoying it. It's pretty popular. Uh, the next one I want to talk about is Crossmaster Arena. Simplified theme or niche game I would call this. It's not actually a reiteration of anything else, but I think they're trying to sell or appeal to the same people who maybe would have played Descent or um, Super Dungeon Explore or um, you know various dungeon delving games. But now you've got uh, both system-wise and physically simplified game. Like it's little cute chibi miniatures on a really cute board, um, so it feels simple, <laughs> and you know maybe appeals to kids more even. Um, the system is very basic. You move, you use an attack power, maybe you summon a pet um, and move them, um, but very super basic game. I mean, almost video game like in how simple it is. Um, what what niche are they filling here? I, I think you said it there at the end with the video game niche. I think it's the same thing that we felt that or a lot of people felt with like fourth edition Dungeons and Dragons compared to third edition. Um, I think that the Crossmaster Arena game focuses on the people who are left out with those other ones. People who see that and go, "Wow, the set that looks amazing!" And they're like, "Oh, it's a four-hour game to play." Oh, there's all those cards and all those tokens, ah, and it intimidates them. They look at, yeah, they look at Crossmaster and they're like, oh, look, it's quick, the things are cute. Oh, people, you know, everyone's just chucking dice and goofing off. I think that it may be more of a gateway Dungeon Dell game is the idea behind it. So from my standpoint, it seems like it's, it's good because it's maybe bringing people up to the Descent type games in the future. Okay. So the last one in this category I want to talk about is a game called Star Realms. Um, this is a game made by the same designers that did Ascension. Um, and if you've played Ascension and you play Star Realms, you will instantly recognize some similarities. It's built essentially on the bones of Ascension. But I feel like it got streamlined. Uh, they, they, they made it a little snappier. It's got direct conflict now. You're attacking each other or your bases. Um, so this one's a simplification. Oh, oh and they also they wanted it to be portable. So it's a two-player game that fits in one box. Um, you can buy more boxes and add two players per additional mm -hmm. box, but they wanted it to be portable, so it's way smaller than Ascension as well. Um, but they, uh, I, this is a simplification that I thought worked okay, and I, I kind of like. What do you think? I think it gets back to that video game concept again. Uh, th there's an app for it right out the gate, and when you're watching it played on the on like your computer or on your iPhone or tablet, whatever it is, the graphics are the same. They didn't have to change the graphic interface. It was all designed with that in mind. I think that shows in like its simplicity and its quickness to play is that it's something you can just pick up and click and start playing right away. But at the same time, you, they simplified it in some ways, but it's almost more of a visual simplification than like an actual mechanic simplification because they added combat. You're right. They, they still have um, different factions like in Ascension, but... And in fact, I think they work together more in yeah, they do. in Star Realms than in Ascension. So, I, in this, I think it was all this the simplification of it was more of a graphical simplification 
and the fact that it was pared down to just be for two players. And yeah, I, I think it runs smoother. I think it's something that will come to the table a lot more because of that. And because you can just buy another box to make it for four, it's really easy to, to scale back up as you want. And you don't need to lug out big decks with all the expansion and everything. Ascension gets big, very unwieldy. And it's something that you can't, you, you kind of lose some of the themes in it all. So yeah, for, for me, I think it's a vast improvement. All right, I got one last category, um, sort of special mentions. Uh, I want to talk about two specific games, uh, Caverna being the first one. Caverna was designed by the same designer as Agricola. Um, Agricola, you either love it or hate it, I think. Um, I don't, don't really like it. Um, it's, a, it's, it's an intense game. There's a lot of pressure in that game. And Caverna seems to be going more the... Victory point solid direction uh, it opens up a lot of strategies, a lot of choices. Where Caverna kind of punished you for not doing, trying to do almost everything. Yeah, um, this gives you outs and gives you different strategies to pursue. So I think it's not actually a simpler game technically, but it's not as mean a game. So I consider it simpler in that it's going to have more broad appeal and not crush your soul. <laughs> Uh, what do you think? I almost think it's almost a reverse of that. I think that it it's more complicated, but it's kind of simpler for the, the actual gamer. Whereas if you if you were someone who was maybe more new to gaming, when you lay out Caverna, there's stuff everywhere. You don't you don't it doesn't quite when you look at Agricola, it looks very pared down. It looks like something at first you know it's just a couple options, there's not a lot of stuff. Caverna, there's stuff everywhere. You have like the foreside and the mountainside. Um, so I think that, yeah, from, from our standpoint, we're like, wow, this game is a lot easier on us, like psychologically, because the, the food's easier to get. There's lots of different options. You aren't feeling always cut out of things. But I think they actually, in a way, they, they added more options, and I guess that made it feel similar. Mm -hmm. But it's actually, I think, more complicated. It's, yeah. it's kind of back and forth. Certainly more gears and things to pull mm -hmm. over, yeah. Okay, um, completely wrong on that one, I guess, but that's fine. It, it just felt simpler. <laughs> um, Eldritch Horror uh, is a pretty new game. Uh, it's very popular already. Um, it is sort of the uh, simplified descendant of another hugely popular game, Arkham Horror. Um, they both are based in a kind of Lovecraft Cthulhu world. Um, I think the same designer worked on both. Um, but we've played Arkham Horror a couple times, and I don't. I think overwhelmingly the group didn't like them. Yeah. Like it. Um, it felt very long and clunky. Um, all kinds of stuff going on. Felt it didn't feel like a direction, or it didn't this great, great Cthulhu theme that you see everywhere, and it didn't, didn't really come out. So Elder Horror now comes on the scene. It's simpler. I think it's a lot. Plays a lot shorter time. And it has this more world globe trotting adventure feel that they kicked it all up with mm -hmm. instead of just running around Arkham. Um, and it's more, uh, I think, more focused on co op than Arkham Horror. Yeah. Um, so I think it's, it's simpler in a couple different ways. What do you think? I think it's um, it's mechanics of, of Arkham Horror were, I guess, you're playing. The game's playing you more than you're playing it, is what it felt. There was a lot more of checking the monsters moving around the board, and it seemed very, like, we had to do this, we had to do this. Like, I remember we played it, I think, the first time, and we beat it. And we got done, and we're like, we played this game, we won. It wasn't on the hardest difficulty or anything, but we won. And none of us felt like we had contributed. It felt like the whole time we were making sure the game was working right, and not so much that we were playing it. And I think it's it's the other way around with Elder Tor. I think that you you're you're playing the game, not the game playing you. Right? I again, I don't know if that's simpler. I, I again, I think it's a psychological thing. Whereas there's actually, I feel like maybe you do a little bit more, maybe in Elder Tor, mm -hmm. a little bit more matching up of stuff. But at the same time, you're not um, you're not having to turn this wheel to keep the game going. You're playing you. Right. And I think that's where the the simplification or the the ease of it comes in. Yeah. Yeah, I felt in Arkham Horror like. All I was doing is like, where do I need to go? What button do I got to push? Oh, there's a gate. I got to go there and do something. Okay. And I think in the other one, you get to decide where you want to travel to and what you're going to do there. And it's, 
it's a definitely a shorter time, so they must have simplified it at some level, mm -hmm. I guess. Maybe that's just how the players contribute has gotten simpler or something. I don't know. Okay, so those are all the ones I wanted to talk about specifically. Um, for me, I, I'm sensing a trend in simplification, and for me, the jury's out on whether it's a good trend or not. Um, we'll see. I'm sure it's going to be ongoing for a while. Uh, we'll see more dice games and more short games and more micro games, I'm sure. Um, or simpler iterations of game, or I don't want to call them dumbed down, but <laughs> more gateway versions of games. So we'll see how it goes. Um, would love your guys' feedback. Maybe in the comments, let us know, like, do you think this is a trend? And if it is, is it a good trend, a bad trend? Am I crazy? Should I just enjoy my games and shut up? Let me know. Um, but thanks for joining us today, and we'll see you next time. Bye. For more information on the Duality Gamecast or our sponsor, visit us on Twitter and Facebook. Thanks for tuning in. I shall remain out of this conversation. I'm actually hot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what did we say last time? Hmm.